Good morning, King George County, and welcome to this week's edition of Ask the Superintendent. I want to thank you guys so much for continually sending in great questions. I've got three questions to answer this week. It is October 24th, the last full week of October already. So keep up the good progress, guys. I appreciate everyone's questions. Keep sending them in. It always helps us work in a manner that satisfies our community's needs, our parents' needs, and our students' needs. So thank you so much. Keep pushing in the good questions. First question this week is... Uh, I was wondering about the pumpkin patch plans, ooh, that's a tongue twister, uh, for our different elementary school students. So I reached out to our uh, school principals, and uh, this is what I found out. So uh, let's see, starting off with Sealston Elementary, our second grade students will be going to Brayhead Farm on November 2nd. And at Brayhead Farm, the students will learn about the life cycle of a pumpkin, uh, honeybees, and a variety of other animals and their habitats. I have uh, King George Elementary School. King George Elementary School, second graders have already gone to Belvedere Plantation on October 7th. And then on Friday, well, this was Friday of last week, October 21st, a local farmer delivered pumpkins to the kindergarten, first and second grade students. Uh, and they provided a farming presentation and uh, conducted a pumpkin investigation, which I heard from many teachers and students was very informative uh, and very enjoyable. So uh, thank you to those folks that came in and gave that presentation. Finally, uh, Ms. Brown, Dr. Brown from, King, or from Potomac Elementary School sent in that the kindergarten uh, went to Brayhead Farm on October 21st, so that was also Friday, and our second grade went to Sneed Farm on October 12th. Uh, so those are all of the uh, pumpkin patch plans that are happening in King George County as we are here on the eve of uh, Halloween. So thank you guys for those comments and questions. Next question is, uh, since teachers are considered state employees, uh, will they receive a bonus on December 1st like other state employees? So this is certainly a, a, co a uh, topic of conversation that we have discussed uh, here in the school board office. Our next school board meeting is this evening. This will certainly be something that will be on the minds of our school board members. Uh, we are aware of uh, the process that's going on through the state right now. And the best thing I can tell you at this time, given, given that it's the morning of October 24th and our, our meetings this evening, is that it will be a topic of conversation. So if you can, tune in. Uh, tune into our school board meeting either online or in person. We would certainly appreciate you there. Um, and there's also an opportunity for public comment if you'd like to say a few words uh, concerning this or, or really any other matter. So tune in is the best I can tell you right now. The final question I had uh, is concerning speech services. Uh, so the question is, uh, how do I, how do I, um, I'm trying to paraphrase it, how do I reach out to the school division to uh, schedule speech therapy? So uh, it's, it's a bit of a challenging question to answer because typically in a public school system, 99% of the time, speech services are assigned through the special education process. So it's not that a parent would have to reach out and request speech services. Uh, the way that process works in public school is that a student is found eligible for speech or for any other um, uh, disability. And following the eligibility process and the origination of the IEP, which is the Individualized Education Program for that particular child, speech services can be included. When speech services are included, then the school division takes care of providing those services uh, at, at the frequency that was decided within the IEP. So that's how it typically happens uh, at the school level. Now, there are some unique circumstances. There could be uh, maybe a preschool student that hasn't uh, fully entered the public school system yet. There could be a private school student that uh, is outside of the school division but requires special education services. Those things are a possibility. There's some other unique uh, circumstances where uh, you may need to reach out to the school division to request speech services. If that has to happen, then let me give you the contact information for that. Ms. Howard is our uh, director or supervisor of special services. Her email address is khoward at kgcs.k12.va.us. 
And if you'd rather give her a phone call, her direct line is 540-775-8621. If you reach out to her that way, uh, call her, email her. And if you'd like to, you can certainly CC or give me a call as well on that email. If you fall into one of those unique circumstances, then she'll be happy to help you figure out how we can coordinate some speech services. If your child is within the school division, you can also reach out to Ms. Howard or myself, and that process would start um, you know, with your request for special education services. We would go through eligibility, uh, originate the IEP, and speech services would be included in that process. I'm hoping that answers that question there. Those were the three questions I had this week. I hope everybody is having a great school year. We are in about week 10 of the school year. So we're coming to the end of October, uh, working our way towards the holiday season. So keep the questions coming in, guys. Uh, they certainly, as I've told you before, help us out an immense, you know, immensely because they help us guide ourselves uh, towards the, the needs that you all have. So thank you so much for your time. Hopefully these videos are informative to you and I look forward to next week's questions. Thank you again and have a nice day.